All right, we're going to record this. We're putting this on YouTube. If you're watching this on YouTube, this is literally to explain if you are someone who watches a streamer play League of Legends or you want to watch League of Legends, maybe you want to get into League of Legends, but you're like, I don't understand what the fuck I'm looking at. This game is super complicated. I don't get it. This is hopefully a five to 10 minute video. I don't know how long we go. I ramble. I'm an idiot, but we're going to go quick. All right. Goal of League of Legends is to take out the other team's nexus and not get weird pop-up porno ads. Okay. Once you do destroy that last thing, you win. And it says victory. The other way is, like I said, if you make the other team decide to vote to quit out of the game. So when people say League of Legends is a mental game, it really is. Because if a person is playing the jungle role, and we'll get into what that is, and they die three times within five minutes, that person is so mentally distraught, genuinely, that they might quit out on the game, they may sit in the fountain and not play, or they're just going to continually start typing shit to their team, everyone is pissed, and it, it deteriorates the mental. You can defeat people mentally in this game simply if they are a weak person. Game one of the day, if you play, and that happens to you, you might brush it off, no big deal, and maybe you win the game because other teammates are doing well. But I guarantee you, if you go two games deep and this shit's happening and you're losing hard, you will fucking hate yourself and you'll hate the game real fast. All right, so in order to get from your side of the map where the river cuts across it in the diagonal here in the mid going this way, you have to take towers, a series of towers. There is three towers in the middle, on the right, on the top. It doesn't matter how you do it. You can take a series of towers. You can just really run it down mid, however you want. Once you start knocking out the towers, you can get further. What happens is you can't just run past the tower and run right into their base because the towers shoot you and they can genuinely kill you in like two to three shots depending on your level. So you have to take out the towers along the way. How your team decides to do that kind of unfolds as the game goes. Sometimes one of the lanes isn't being pushed as fast as you want. So you'll see these people kind of locked in and they're just fighting forever. No one's killing each other. No one's really dying. No one can take the tower, blah, 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 blah. But on the other side of the map, maybe someone's steamrolling and running through. Who knows? There are five different roles you can play. You can play bottom lane. And if you play bottom lane, you can play a damage dealer that's usually a marksman. So characters like Misfortune who can shoot guns, Caitlyn with a rifle, Jin like I was playing with a rifle. Um, there's a bunch of those kinds of characters. They're generally the range characters. They're considered the marksman or the all damage carry. Their job is they don't give a shit about armor. They want to do as much damage to you as possible and delete you off the map while being safe behind their team. Very hard role to play. Next one is support. You also play it in the bottom lane. The job of support is to enable that person, that all damage carry to get kills and stay alive. Certain supports can roam. So if you're in bottom lane here, you can take your support character, run it up the river into mid lane and potentially help the mid laner as well. And you can go back and forth. That usually happens after a little bit. Characters like Bard or Pike are really good that, uh, at that. They get mobile boots that give their movement speed a shit ton of crazy boost. They can run across river real fast, show up, make a pick, or make that person have to teleport back from taking damage. Boom, you run back to lane and you start helping your teammate. Mid lane, pretty self-explanatory. You play in the middle lane. It's the shortest lane, so it's one of the safest roles because you can just run back pretty easy if someone shows up. Then you've got top lane, also self-explanatory, the longest lane. So if you go a little too far, it's really easy for someone to show up and kick your ass in a 2v1. Or if you're doing a 1v1 and you're losing... You got to run back. You're probably not going to make it if that person has any abilities that can stop you from moving for a second, get a bunch of damage on you, catch you before you can get away. And the last role is jungle. Jungle is the one that people look at and think that it's the most complicated. It takes one YouTube video to learn it. To learn it. Not play it like really, really good, but to know what the fuck you're doing, you know? So jungle's job is <clears throat> on your side, you have a set of camps down here and up top. Or here and up top on the other side. If you started on the bottom here. If you started on this side. On the blue side. If you start on the purple side. You do that jungle. The creatures in the jungle. On one side are always the same. And they respawn in a certain amount of time. Same with the top. 
there is a blue big golem here. And then on the other side, on the top side, is a red little motherfucker. Looks like a tree. On the bottom side is the red guy. And then the blue guy is on the high side on this side, the blue side. They give you a buff. You want them. The blue one gives you back mana. The red one, I don't know what the fuck it does. Damage reduction or damage increase or HP something. Doesn't matter. You get those. As a jungler, the way you help your team win, it is very critical. The jungler is one of the most important jobs. You help your team get ahead. You don't have to get kills, but you have to help your team get ahead. And that's kind of a big misconception. People think, oh, hey, our jungler is 0-0 zero, zero, and 3 assists. Well, he's helping you get ahead. He doesn't have kills, but he showed up to three different things that helped enable someone else to win their lane. There's multiple ways to do it. If you show up and you get the kill or your teammate gets the kill, great. You just help them snowball their lane so that that person on the other side, when they come back, they're so far behind just from one death that they're probably fucked the rest of the game. Just from one death. And that's where the other jungler has to come into play and be like, oh shit, what do we do here? Do I go enable, do I go undo that damage or do I go enable another lane? Perfect example is mid lane. Lee Sin comes in and kills you at level two. You're dead. You're like, fuck. That other guy you're playing against is a Yasuo. You're like, shit, I'm never going to get ahead on that guy. Your jungler has one decision to make. Do I come to mid lane and fuck up that Yasuo so that he can't keep getting fed? Or do I think you're so fucked already that I need to go help another lane that's doing well and get them further ahead? So the jungler is just trying to kill all those monsters. They level up. They get their money. Oh, shit. There's a giant moth on my monitor. Fucking hail Satan creature. Ah! It's huge. It's the size of my fist. And it was down to fuck. That's like the seventh moth this week. Fuck it. That's not important. That thing was nightmare fuel. It literally showed up and I was like, ah! it's huge. I hate them when they're big. I don't mind moths when they're like normal size. You know, it's whatever. It's like a butterfly, right? Just a fucking ugly one. But when they're ginormous, god damn it. It's like Batman showed up to your house and he's like, where are the drugs? And he wants to fucking bang you. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Bruce. Please leave me alone. Oh, terrifying shit. Anyways, that explains the roles. That explains the goal of the game, right? You're still recording YouTube. I know I'm recording YouTube. They're going to love this. All right. So, though, um, it's Moth, bro. Chill out. Listen, I'll get scared whatever the fuck I want to get scared about. Shut the fuck up. Continuing on. You start at level one every game with whatever character you pick. The max level you can get to is level 18. Every level that you gain, you can invest a skill point into a skill to level up. You have a ability on your Q key on your keyboard, W, E, and R. R is your ultimate. Has generally the longest cooldown. Some characters have like a six second cooldown because it's just another ability. You use correct combinations of things you want to use for your abilities, level your abilities to do more damage, to have a smaller cooldown, etc. Whatever it is, heals more, blah, 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 blah. So as you're Getting experience points, you get them from killing the monsters. They're the creeps. They're the little men who pop out and run across the map. The little men who run across the map, there's knight versions, three of them. And then there's three range casters behind them. And then every few minutes, I believe it's like at three minute mark, a cannon starts showing up. This big fat one. The big fat one takes a while to kill, but it's worth the most gold. I think it's like 14 gold for each regular minion, and then the cannon is like 75 to 90, something like that. So, what you got to do as your person is, you only get money if you get the last hit on that thing. So, this is where a little dance comes into play, right? Let's use mid lane in as, as an example. Two characters are fighting each other, and you're like, man, I really want to hit him, but... Every time I kind of go forward, then he can hit me, and it's, you know what I mean? It's like, how do I how do I initiate that hit? Genuine, generally, you're looking for when they're about to get their last hit. Because what's going to happen is, when they go to punch it, they go to shoot it, they're locked for a second because they want to hit that minion of yours. That's your chance to hit them and walk away. Or hit them and, you know, drive it forward and do a shit ton of damage because they lost that instant right so what you're really doing in the lanes is you're dancing around each other while hopefully getting last hits 
but baiting last hits to hit each other. Okay. So jungle, of course, is not that. You're killing these little monster camps around the map, and then you show up in a lane and see if you can get a kill. No kill, teleport back, reloop all that shit. Can I get a kill? There is there is major creatures other than the buffs for the jungle to worry about. There's a crab that spawns in the river, worth a lot of gold, and gives you a movement speed boost if you run through the pool that it makes. And it also um, it also gives you a free ward of that area until it disappears for that little pool. And then there's the drake. Those dragons show up in the bottom here in this pit in the bottom lane. You can see that little like almost seed divot there. Those dragons do different effects. They can give you your whole team HP boost the rest of the game for how much you get back. Armor and defense, attack damage, uh, movement speed, whatever. They do four, four different functions. It's random which ones will show up. And if your team gets to four, right, the next one, or their team gets to four, they've claimed them, they get four for themselves. The next thing that spawns is the Elder Drake. Gives a massive big old buff and your team's ready to murder bitches because you guys are going to be swole AF. It's like getting an extra three levels. I mean, like, you're ready to bang ass. In the top side, in that C divot, is two things that can spawn. In the early game, up to the first 20 minutes, at the 15 minute mark, I believe it is, it's either the 14 or the 15, a herald can spawn. If you kill that giant crab herald, it has a weak spot on the back of it that's a giant eyeball that opens up. You want to hit it in the eyeball as you turn it around. When it drops, it gives you its eye. You can summon it in any lane whenever you want, whoever picks it up, and then that thing does critical damage and it only attacks towers. So if you are like, man, we can't get a fucking tower to go down, bring that shit somewhere when someone gets it, and then boom, it'll destroy the majority of a tower. They're going to be panicking because they're like, oh shit, we got to kill this thing before it hits the tower, blah, 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 blah. Um, it's really good to use it in mid because the mid lane is the most important lane to win. If you can win middle, you can just, again, it's the shortest distance into their base. It's the quickest path to get in and fuck them up and destroy them and it's the most important lane to deny their capability to walk back out of base safely you see where it's labeled two jungle in the top if you've taken both of those towers right the, and they don't have vision in either of those two jungles your team can sit in bushes these dipshits are going to walk out to the side on their own not thinking like oh they're probably going to be no wrong we're in the bush we're ready to fuck so taking middle is key because it lowers the amount of area they can run through safely now in low elo no one's putting wards down anyway you may as well just fucking run around like a jackass who gives a shit because people are dumb anyways so you level you get skills you gain money from last hitting stuff you also gain money for killing people and you get bonus money if the person you kill was like on a kill streak if they are like three kills in without dying five kills in six kills in and you shut them down you get bonus guap, which is to help your team make those comebacks. Because you think about it, if this guy is up 10 kills and there's no bonus gold from him, he doesn't give a shit. He can play reckless as he wants. But he knows if he dies, it's like, oh shit, who do I die to matters. Because I might end up giving a 1,000 gold to someone who now can outscale me and do more damage or is going to be a bigger threat to my whole team. So you got to be really careful. When you're on a kill streak, as... As crazy as your character might be, don't give them that shit. You're better off running away and two of your teammates who are worth nothing dying than you giving up an extra thousand Gs to someone. So, you get money from killing people, last hitting enemies, killing the things in the jungle, taking towers. At the beginning of the game, up until the first, what is it, 10 minutes, the towers have plates on them. If you can chunk off a plate, it's 160 gold, but it's shared amongst whoever is there for your team. So the plates are really important to get so that you can actually get more money really quickly, even without killing. Um, a kill is like 300 gold. So if you take two plates really fast, it's like you just killed someone. You get 320, you're back at base, you're looking swole, you're buying nice items before they can. Um, now we get to the part of the game that people consider the complicated part, right? Items. You look at items, you're like, fuck me. What the fuck is this thing? Why is he buying it? Look. It's low elo. None of us know what the fuck we're buying. All right. So there's apps that will literally import ruins. Ruins are sets of abilities um, that your character can have here. Let's like pull one up. Is it here? Let's, kill, uh, let's see. Okay. Right. Yeah. 
See, ruins here are on the right-hand side. I'll make this a little bit bigger. On the right-hand side. These are what ruins are right here, right? They do different effects, and there's different skill trees to use. There's sorcery, domination, precision. Each character gen normally has, like, one or two viable things. These are online. You just use them, but they do different things. And you and I, when we're watching the game... Until we get to the point where you're like, I understand everything about the game, you're not even going to notice these things. Electrocute, for example, if you hit a champion with three separate attacks or abilities within three seconds, you deal bonus damage. And then it's on a cooldown for about 25 seconds to 20 seconds as you level and it goes. So you're not even going to notice this. But just know that there's different things at play. Like something you would notice is over here, this is biscuit delivery. Every two minutes... At the two-minute mark, four-minute mark, six-minute mark, you get a biscuit. The biscuit will restore some of your health and your mana. Or you can sell it for some gold if you want to get a gold advantage that way. You'll see it because it'll show up in the person's inventory in this corner where I'm at. You'll see items. You can use them to heal, whatever. These things are talking about the types of damage boost you can have. You could do attack speed bonuses. This is just like these ones right here. These ones are just like bonus attack, bonus attack speed, cooldown reduction so you can use your moves more often. These things, you never even hear me reference these when I'm playing. None of these things are coming into play when we're talking about them. You don't see this. This is behind the shadow shit. It doesn't matter. So for you as a viewer, you don't need to know about it. But as you as a player, go to a website like either u.gg or blitz.gg. If you go to blitz.gg, download the app. It will auto-import ruins for you for your character to use you never have to worry about this this is just done for you it gives you the best one based off of the highest percent win rate for that character in that role if you're picking zed mid it's gonna give you electrocute build you're good over here are summoner spells in the deep upper left hand corner where it's that yellow thing with like a person going like this and then there's like a hand with fire those are summoner spells these spells 99% of the time, everyone in the game is going to pick the yellow flash. What it does, it just lets you quickly teleport and then has a long-ass cooldown. It is your chance to jump to someone who might be getting away and you might be able to kill them. It's your chance to avoid a move. It's your chance to get the fuck out of dodge before you die. It's a get-out-of-jail-free card or a run-that-shit-down, you're-not-going-anywhere. The fire one is Ignite. That one lights a person on fire and initially does damage, and then it does a little more damage over time. And as the game goes on, it does more and more damage, so it becomes even more deadly. Ignite is really good in uh, in aggressive players and aggressive playstyles, because if you are the kind of person who's like, I'm going to fucking all in this guy at level 3, I'm going to fucking try to kill him at level 6, and you have Ignite up, that can be the difference between you getting that kill or them flashing away before you get it it makes a huge difference it's also really good against characters like garen for example who restore health while they're fighting and shit that shit will shut that shit down it'll be chipping away at what they're trying to restore so that they can't just like you know oh he's not taking any damage well he will if you ignite him okay then we've got to talk about wards wards are little items that you can get every time you go back to the fountain it'll give it to you when you teleport back <laughs> thank you thank you link for the host you use these to give you vision of that area so when you're looking at the mini map you can see enemies who run through it walk through it are in that area or if they put another ward down there vision is key to everything unfortunately in low elo people do not understand that if people would look at their mini map every three to five seconds three if you want to be good Three to five seconds and just double check where your wards are. Look at your map. Look at your other uh, play, uh, other players on your team. Where's their jungler? Is he pathing here? Should he be coming this way for potentially a gank? Are we too far up? Are we going to get killed? Like, if you're looking at your mini map, you minimize that so much, it'll never happen to you. You'll be so much better than everyone else playing. Okay? Then you've got your starting items. Again, Blitz and whatever. They're going to import these. They're going to give them to you. You don't need to worry about it if you, when you're first starting out. We've already talked about abilities. Everyone's are different. Everybody does different things. I'll do a better job in the future when I play my characters before we start the match. I'll explain what my character does, okay, and my goal 
in the game and in the lane when we start. Um, that way you have a better sense of like, what's, what's Rad trying to do with this character? And is he doing a good job? Because if you don't know, like, we'll use the perfect example of the character I just played. We played Jin. Jin is a marksman. Okay. Jin gets four bullets that he can shoot before a reload animation. He's very different from all the other characters in the game because of that. It's a bit of a hindrance, but he gets a bonus off of it. That fourth shot is a guaranteed critical shot, does a shit ton of damage, and gives him a movement speed boost when he pops that shit off. So if he wants to sh chase someone down, it's good. His Q ability is he throws a grenade, and it will bounce four times. Jin is a serial killer who is obsessed with the number four. Everything has to be done in fours. So his Q is he throws the grenade, and it'll bounce three times. And if it hits a... Um, enemy like a cha uh, enemy champion on that fourth one it does a shit ton of damage especially if it killed the la if the grenade is used to last hit three minions for example it goes boff kill boff kill boff kill and then lands on an enemy all oh my land the damage is huge you can take off like half their health bar in the early game because of one well-placed grenade his w is he pulls out a sniper and it shoots a very long line and if it hits an enemy that's already been hit by something in the last like three to five seconds, it will root them. So if Jin shoots them and then hits W, it makes it so they can't move. Root is you can't move. You can still shoot an attack, anything around you. You can heal yourself, but you can't go anywhere. You can't move for a little bit. His E is he places these invisible little traps on the ground and they slow anything walking through it. And if they stay in there too long, it then does damage. And then lastly, his R is his ultimate. Four shots, the same as his gun. Three are normal damage. The fourth one is a critical shot. They shoot very far. It zooms out the entire map for you and makes like a giant V. And you can shoot, but it's aim-based what you can hit. So you can miss all of your shots. You might hit two. You might hit all four. Anything in the path of a gun shot when you do the ultimate takes the shot first. So say there's two enemies like this, right? It doesn't go through them. And I can't sh hit the shit behind it because it has to at first impact this. So what you can do to save teammates, if Jin is doing that, is you just stand in front of them and you just <laughs> you take you. the shots for them, right? Aquarian, thank you for the auto host, brother. Um, <clears throat> if we could give a shout out to Aquarian. Appreciate it, man. So that's how Jin works. There's like 130 other characters to dissect and talk about all of them different. All of them different. What's up? What, don't scare me. Is there a moth where you are too? Is that moth near me? Oh, scared the shit out of me. There was a moth here. I fucking shit my pants earlier. Don't talk about that. Yo, Mr. Maniacal Mikhail. How are you, brother? All right. Items are crazy. Items do... All of this. This is the most complicated part. That's why I saved it for last. Okay. I'm going to take a quick swig of water before we talk about items. Items. Is it traveling? It has its own area code. Let's see if we can even pull them up somewhere. I mean, here's items right here. Let's, like, just jump on this guy's item. This is a Doran's Blade. It costs 450 gold. It sells for 180 gold, does 8 attack damage, 80 health, 3% lifesteal. It's generally the first item you would pick. Yes, Lambo, as my mom. It's generally the first item you'll see picked by a lot of marksmen, like myself. When I was playing Jin, that was the first item I bought. Items do crazy different things, like this Infinity Edge. It costs 3,400, sells for 2,380. Oh my god, this moth is fucking Satan. Leave me alone, creature of death. Get the fuck out of here. It is a bat. It is fucking huge. It's fucking huge. It does 80 attack damage, 25% critical strike, and it has a unique passive ability. Passive versus active. You fucking bitch. This moth. The passive means it happens just from existence. You don't have to hit a key on your keyboard to do it. Active means you have to touch a button to get that ability to happen. The passive on this is the critical strikes deal 225% damage instead of 200%. It 
It means you get way more damage from critical strikes. And remember, Jinin, for example, gets a critical on his fourth shot. So, items. That is the complicated part. It is the complicated part. But you as a viewer, you don't need to give a shit, right? Just know that I'm buying the items that are typically... Like, there's typically three items that each character needs in order to do what it needs to do, right? There's usually not too many characters that can kind of deviate from the plan too, too far. So, different items do different things. Um, it's one of those, like, when you're watching the game, if you see something happen on screen and you're not sure what the hell that was, just ask the question. Like, a good example is Zanya's Hourglass is an item that you can touch the button and it freezes you in time for five seconds. No one can hurt you. You can't move. You're just stuck in time for five seconds. So, if you're a first-time watcher of the game, you'll be like, the fuck was that why do you glow yellow is that an ability what what the fuck and then you see someone else do it on the other team you're like wait he has it too what the fuck are they the same character that's just one of those things you have to ask right okay so what questions do you guys have like honey what do you what do you want to know about the game did that help at all that you feel like any of this explanation made the game make more sense did you learn anything based off of this explanation about the game also what the fuck were you guys talking about? According to my sister, her school district is doing remote learning next year just like this year, and they will permit kids in school physically for two or three days, reason being they only want to have ten kids in each class and the desks far apart. Hmm, weird. She has a friend who was a teacher. Eh, whatever. Fuck it. We'll see what they actually do. If no questions, then that's the end of the YouTube video portion of this, and I'll upload this at some point. Feel free, if you are watching the YouTube version of this, Drop any comment, any question you want. If you're new to watching the game or just learning, I'm more than happy to answer anything you want. I respond to, like, all my YouTube comments. All that I ask is fucking sub. Would it kill you? Would it, would it, would it fucking kill you? Would it? You son of a bitch. Look, I'm the shittiest streamer on Mixer. It doesn't get more poo-poo than this, boys.